There's one. So I was just talking about those rocks. My very next cast. There's some crushed brick right up here. And uh, oh, he came off. That's a good fish right there. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Monster Bass channel. My name is Jeremy with Fishing Alone Star. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. We'd love for you to join us here on the Monster Bass channel as we share a bunch of videos with you, fishing tips, tricks, how to catch fish from the bank as I'm fishing today, from boats, kayaks, you name it. We're here to help you get better as an angler and hopefully catch some big fish along the way, like hopefully we'll do today. But today we're talking about fishing with lipless cranks. I've got a couple to show you, including a new one the Monster Bass is releasing. I'm gonna to try to fish from the bank today. So we're gonna show you a little bit of tips, tricks with the lipless crank, but especially from the bank to hopefully have an effective day and hopefully I'll have an effective day out here as well. So let me turn the camera around and get to fishing and uh, give you a little bit of uh, advice on what I do to catch fish from the bank on lipless cranks and hopefully it works out. Let's roll. All right guys, I've previously been throwing this little red eye shad, chrome and blue, but Check out the new Incision 69 on Monster Bass. This is a green gill color, a little two and a half inch, one ounce lipless crankbait. And uh, I'm gonna break this out. We're gonna swap these out really quickly. I'm gonna throw this one today. I like this blue gill color, green gill color. Uh, this body of water I'm fishing has a lot of blue gill, has shad as well. So this one may work instead, but today uh, I'm gonna try the gill color first. Since this is a new one I just picked up from Monster Bass. New feature, this Incision 69. We're going to tie it on and uh, see if we can't catch some fish on this one. So let's swap these out real quick. So as I'm beating the bank today, I'll show you the three colors I brought with me. This is that new Monster Bass Incision 69, that green shad color. This one you've seen before. This is the Castaic Lipless featured in a Monster Bass box. And of course, most people know the red eye shad. But I like these three colors mainly because I've got a chrome color that uh, gives off a lot of flash. I've got a kind of a more natural shad color with that Castaic Lipless. But then I also have a bluegill color here. With that monster bash monster bass and incision can't talk monster bass incision 69 so we're gonna go with that one right now give it a go and uh who knows we'll see if they'll bite that one if not we'll mix up colors and uh try one of these other two one thing i really like about this one though is i'm noticing that front red hook that gives bass a lot to target in on a little bit uh, thinner profile which is really good for this time of year so let's uh tie this on i'll show you the gear and equipment that i'm using and uh, the retrieval as well that uh, usually leads to some bites. So let's uh, let's get that rolling. Another quick tip for you right now, I'm just walking around with one rod and reel today. So in order to carry some extra baits with me, I'm just gonna take this Monster Bass packaging, pop in a couple of extra lipless cranks in there. And uh, there you go, so I've got those, but uh, we've got this one tied on. And uh, let's make some fan casts and see if we can land one. Now that we got rigged up and we're making some casts, let's talk about the gear and then we'll talk about the retrieval, all right? So the gear to use, when throwing, in this particular case, a lipless crank, but somewhat applies to a normal crankbait as well. First of all, let's talk about the rod. The rod, now this one is particularly made to be a crankbait rod, but this is a cranking rod, seven foot moderate action. The reason why you want a moderate action rod, if I show you the tip right here, you want a rod that's gonna have a lot of bend in the tip. That's gonna help absorb a fish's bite on the treble hooks and is going to allow for a good hookup ratio so you don't want to be ripping the hook away from these fish you want to have them bite into it and stay pinned and a moderate rod is going to help you do that it's going to help absorb the bite and it's also going to help absorb your hook set which doesn't have to be a hard hook set right so if you get a bite you're just going to kind of lean like this you're not going to give it a hard rib like you would on a texas rig or a jig or something along that nature so a good kind of seven foot somewhere in there, give or take, take a couple inches, but a uh, seven foot moderate action rod, kind of a medium somewhere in there, uh, will work really well with throwing a crankbait or really anything uh, with treble hooks. So keep that in mind. Now the line that I'm using is a 12 pound fluorocarbon. You can throw 14, even 17 pound with your lipless cranks. Any of those will work. But uh, for a line, 12 to 14 pound fluorocarbon is usually what most guys are using, and gals. But uh, you can use 17 pound as well. I've done it, no problem. And then let's talk about the reel. The reel, when you're fishing a lipless crank, 
let me actually back up. When you're fishing a normal crankbait, sorry, I'm bringing some grass here. When you're fishing a normal crankbait, you want it real slower. That's because a normal crankbait is going to dive as you're reeling and float when you stop. With a lipless crank, it's going to dive when you stop reeling. So in this particular case, I'm fishing from the bank. I'm kind of reeling pretty fast because I don't want it to sink and drag the bottom and get hung up, etc. Or get bogged down a lot of that grass you're seeing. I want to come right over the top of it. So as I'm retrieving here, my real speed uh, or gear ratio, if you will, uh, this one's a 7.5 to 1. And again, I'm reeling it pretty fast because I want to come right over the top of that grass. And uh, when I hit it like that, I want to try to rip it out before I get stuck in it uh, like this. But you want to be near grass or in grass because that's obviously where the fish are. The goal though is to just hit the tip of it and then rip it up or rip it out of the grass, not get stuck in it. But uh, sometimes, you know, if you get a lot of hydro like that, you'll want to be in there in it. So that's going to happen. But uh, again, real speed, 7.5 to 1 is what I'm using. That's a good all around speed. You can go slower if you want, like a 6.8, or you can go even faster. Just be cognizant of how fast you're reeling. And uh, I'll tell you, if you're hitting the grass quite a bit and then speed up your retrieval, just like I did there and came through clean that time. If, uh, if you're not hitting grass or hitting bottom or deflecting off stuff, I'd tell you to slow down your retrieve and make sure you're doing that. Because ultimately when you're throwing a lipless, you want to be in and around stuff. Sure, you can fish in open water, but along the grass edge, over the top of grass, something like that's going to work really well because a lot of times that's where those fish are going to be hiding in. So I can tell as I'm getting a little bit shallower here, I'm going to reel a little bit faster, come across the top of the grass, and uh, caught just a little bit. There's a little one. <clears throat> a little guy. But uh, threw it right over the threw it right over the edge of the grass over there. Kind of kept it on top of it. And the uh, little guy came and munched on uh, that new monster bass. Incision 69. Alright, little one. Hopefully there's some bigger ones up there. But uh, I thought I saw some shad flickering along the bank line, so I kind of paralleled it right there, and I uh, got that little one come up and eaten. So uh, let's see if there's maybe some bigger fish over there. All right, guys, another quick tip. If you ever come across body water that you're fishing and you have some rocks like this, you may not be able to see them, but they go out a little bit ways in your water. Run a lipless crank right over the top of those. Rocks like this will hold heat in the winter. So today it's about 40, 45 degrees. I know it looks warmer, uh, but it's not. Uh, so 40, 45 degrees. Last night we got below freezing, but rocks like this will hold heat on sunnier days and fish will kind of gravitate towards that because the smaller bait fish are there because it's a little bit warmer. So fish your lipless and around rocks like this. There was not any fish on this one, but there's another pile of rocks down this uh, bank line as I gravitate towards my left. So we're going to keep doing that and uh, see if it might produce a fish for us. But don't be afraid to fish rocks in the winter because they hold heat, whether that be a rock dam, uh, if there's a dam anywhere you're fishing, um, or even if you're just walking around the bank and you see rocks like this, fish them. There's one. So as I was just talking about those rocks, my very next cast, there's some crushed brick right up here. And uh, oh, he came off. That's a good fish right there. That was a good fish. I went to swing him up on the bank. <laughs> I'm gonna count that one. That one counts. Hopefully it counts. Uh, I'm on kind of a ledge right here. I couldn't get down to him, but that was a bit of a two and a half pounder or so. <clears throat> but what I was saying is uh, these rocks, Right here, there's some crushed brick and uh, a little bit of a, just a different contour, right? Than uh, the grass I've been fishing, although there's still some grass in there. And uh, first cast, I mean, like literally, I just turned the GoPro back on and uh, took two real turns and uh, that fish came up and ate that lure. Uh, and had, had him on there, he came up and gave me a head shake right here. And then uh, there's about a four foot, three foot drop right here that I went to swing him up and uh, he came off right as I went to swing him. But uh, that was a good fish. It's a, it's a fun little catch. Oh, 
Oh, a little one came up and got it right at the bank. Got that one, guys. He came up and ate it just as I was pulling it out of the water. Just a good reminder to finish your cast, but uh, that little guy came up and munched on a uh, fat too. But, uh, he came up and ate it right there at the bank. All right, guys, as you can see, I am back at home. It got too dark out there. Sun goes down too fast these days. But anyways, I wanted to recap really quickly by just showing you again those colors in this new lipless crank. So let me turn the camera around and show you that lure. All right, guys, I'll say I was really impressed with the Incision 69. Now, this is a little bit more narrow probably than uh, most lipless cranks, but I will tell you, let's see if I can hold this up to the light. You can kind of see how it's translucent towards the bottom with this longer weight. Gives it a really nice rattle. So it's almost like a almost like a one knock. And it has a really unique sound to it. So I really like it. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pick up some more colors, some additional colors here. Uh, and uh, those hooks are super sharp. Caught uh, I would say three. I don't know. You guys tell me. Tell me if the one that came off of the bank counts or not. But uh, landed two. I was just say I caught three. Uh, but uh, this little Incision 69, two and a half inch, half ounce lipless crank by Monster Bass, got it done today. All right, guys, there you have it. Monster Bass Incision 69. Get out and throw some lipless cranks right now in this time of year, right? The fall, the winter months are a great time. Really, anytime year round, it's a great time to throw lipless cranks, but right now, especially. So make sure you get out there, give them a try. Also, go visit the Monster Bass store monsterbass.com not only for the lures they have that are that are monster bass lures but also anything that you see in the boxes you can only then go and purchase more of there on monsterbass.com and make sure you check out the regional pro bags through the subscription monthly it's an awesome set of lures that come to you each month regionally handpicked to help you go catch fish wherever you're located in your part of the country and if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe right here and if you would, hop over to my channel, Fish and Lone Star. Give me a subscribe as well. Make sure you stay tuned, though, for more awesome tips and tricks to come. It may be getting cold, but it doesn't necessarily mean the bass fishing isn't heating up. So stay tuned. More to come. Monster Bass. Go catch one.